Good evening, Todd Sachs of Sachs Realty, and welcome to another Tuesday night podcast. And tonight you're going to learn all about vacation rentals. I'm really excited tonight's guest, Steve Daria. He's in Florida and he's a pro at this stuff. And, uh, you know, guys, you're going to learn, you know, should you, you might be thinking, you know, should you get into real estate investing, period? Maybe, you know, you're thinking something completely different, like single family houses on an annual basis. And tonight, we're going to talk about these short-term rentals, these vacation rentals, and uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm Todd Sachs. I'm a real estate broker here in Maryland, and I help buyers and sellers of both residential and commercial real estate. And if you're anywhere else in the country, we've got an amazing broker network. Uh, just shoot me a uh, email. Uh, all of our contact information is in the show notes. We'll be happy to point you in the right direction if you don't have an agent. So uh, be glad to help. Steve, welcome to tonight's show. Thank you very much for having me on, Todd. So where are you uh, right now? You're in, um, are you in Bonita, Florida? Where, where do you live? Um, actually in Bonita Beach, uh, Bonita Springs. Yep. And that's, that's where I live, Bonita Beach. Okay. And so you, um, you've got an amazing YouTube channel. I mean, you're teaching this stuff. You're teaching real estate investing and all kind of investing, actually. And uh, why vacation rentals? Um, I, I mean, ever since I moved to the beach, honestly, uh, I think that was probably about eight, eight or nine years ago. Um, just seeing the potential, we were able to score a, an office across the street from the beach. And the more people I was talking to, the more that, uh, people wanted basically, you know, to have a property in Southwest Florida, um, own it and, and utilize it, but they also wanted to generate income from it. And, you know, from then on, and I've always, you know, uh, had annual rentals, but not necessarily vacation rentals. So once I saw the potential there and the potential to, you know, use a property and create income from it, it's just, it, it you know, I've, I've been kind of hooked to it ever since. So you're a real estate broker as well, right? Yes, sir. What, how did that all come about? Did you become an agent for a period of time? Uh, I came out here in 99, moved from New Jersey to, to uh, Southwest Florida, went to uh, college out here. And while I was in college, I got my real estate license. And because um, I knew I wanted to start investing in real estate. And that was back in 2003. And then 2006, um, I got my real estate broker's license. And that same year, um, my sister and I founded our company, Maxim Realtors. And kind of the rest is history. So um, there's a big difference in when you're investing in um, sort of short-term rental, right? I mean, that's what vacation uh, rentals are all about. It's a short-term rental. Um, you also invested in more long-term, more annual rentals. <clears throat> Which do you like best? I, I like both. Um, I think annual rentals are, are great because you, you do have that consistency um, with vacation rentals in, in Florida anyway. You know, you, there's a lot of peaks and valleys in terms of your income. Like here in Southwest Florida, our, our peak is January, February, March and, and April. Um, so that's where you make majority of your money. That's how that's where, you know, the highest rate per night is in terms of those three, four months. So, um, you know, but the vacation rental aspect of it, it's, you know, I've been drawn to it because you, you are able to buy a property, an investment property that creates income, but also use it yourself as well as, you know, for your family and friends. So I, I really, really like that aspect of it. Do you have a, um, a specialty? So, uh, as far as, and I guess the, the question really is when somebody's thinking about a, a, a vacation rental, I mean, are you always buying places on the beach or do you just try and be in that vacation town? I personally, I'm a beach guy. I love the beach. Um, you know, we've scoured the coast, coast to coast throughout Florida here and, and, and have really been scouting properties, um, kind of all over, um, so I, I really like the beach. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, we were in Georgia not too long ago, a place called Big Canoe, and we were looking at cabins up there. Um, so, I mean, it, it just depends. Um, but, yeah, I favor beaches for sure just because that's that's kind of a more of a water beach kind of guy. That's how you landed where you are right now. So you graduated yep. college and just kind of stayed. Yep, exactly. 
So are you getting, uh, is the market hot for vacation rentals where you are? It, I mean, ever since the pandemic, it's been ridiculous out here. Cause you know, there's a lot of, a lot of States that, you know, people are trying to get out of certain States, certain cities cause lockdowns or whatever. So we've, we've had a, a mass amount of people coming out here and buying up Florida real estate. And some of those people, a lot of the people, they're not just looking to completely leave up north or whatever the case is. So they do want to get their spot in Florida and they do have um, intentions on renting their properties when they're not leasing them out. So how does somebody get started? I would say, you know, with vacation rentals. With vacation rentals. I would say, um, you know, if you're if you're using it for yourself, make sure it's, you know, kind of along those lines that you're asking me, make sure it's a place in an area and a property that you're going to really enjoy, um, especially if you want to utilize it. And then I would say wherever those places are, just find a, a good realtor to, to help you out, to find the right properties and to analyze the properties correctly. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you're looking at the income and expenses associated with the property, the true income and expenses, and not necessarily a pro forma, which is kind of a, and you know, a, a guesstimate. Um, so analyze the numbers and make sure that you have the appropriate professionals in the area to analyze the numbers. And also if you're going to have somebody else manage the properties, um, have them run the numbers as well to make sure it's in line with whatever estimates that you're receiving and, um, and, and shop those companies as well and, and shop their rates because, you know, they're going to charge management fees and the lowest is not necessarily the best. And, um, you know, you kind of get what you pay for in that realm as well. So a lot of the people that you're helping out, um, I guess it kind of starts out that they, um, they, they like to travel maybe themselves and they want, just like you said, a, a place that they can buy and actually vacation. I mean, I'm actually interested in that for myself. Um, you know, if you, you know, have a place, you know, and you can rent it just like you said, and, and get, um, you know, get an income from it, at least it may pay for it, having it to where you can stay for free. And I know, you know, so for people that are out there and, um, you know, the rent, you know, they're investing in rentals, um, there is, you, you're saying there's a big difference. So there's a lot of different considerations and I want to kind of go over those. So, um, I heard you say in, in one of your videos, you know, a lot of people, they don't realize that it's up to you for all of the utilities. So if you buy a rental property, um, your tenants paying the electric, your tenants paying for the trash and things like that. I mean, so what are all of the types of considerations that kind of go into that cost that you're mentioning? Yeah, no, that's that's a great question. Um, yeah, when you're when you're hosting a property, I mean, you're you're providing short term rentals for people, so you do have to provide everything that's needed. You know, just not not just you know what's going to be inside the kitchen and kitchen cabinets, but all the utilities, you know, high speed internet, electric, water, everything essentially that a hotel would provide. You got to think along those lines as well. And, uh, and, and also obviously a clean place and fresh linens and, and everything that somebody's going to need to have a comfort level when staying at your place. And, and also it's extremely important that, you know, these properties are well managed on your behalf or if you're doing it yourself, because if, if they're mismanaged, you're going to get bad reviews, whether it's on Airbnb, VRBO or whatever sites. And that's just going to really decrease your bookings as well as decrease your revenue. So, yeah, I mean, I guess even you, do you put utensils? I mean, are you making your vacation rentals like home? Yeah. I mean, my primary residence right now, it's on Bonita beach. I have it leased out for three months. So I'm actually in another property on Bonita beach as well, where there's 10 days opened up on this place. So I jumped over here for 10 days and, you know, this place, you know, it, it's turnkey there, you know, it's got a, a kitchen, it's turnkey, everything down to toilet paper is included. So <clears throat> you, you, and if you go above and beyond as well. So we, a lot of times we're, you know, in, we put four bottles of water in there, we put snacks, we put a bottle of wine. So we go above and beyond for our guests, because that does increase our ratings. And when you when you have better ratings on all the sites, they're going to, you know, they're, 
like Airbnb is incentivized to promote your property with, you know, good ratings because they make more money off of it as well, as opposed to promoting a property that has poor ratings. So is there a rule of thumb like, um, you know, and I, I, you probably should check with companies, management companies. I mean, if, if you're in New Jersey and you buying a place in Florida for a vacation rental, <clears throat> it's not easy for you to manage. So what do you recommend as far as, you know, before someone selects a place? I mean, how would they know when they're buying a condo on the beach that they can actually at least pay the bills? Do, do your research. I mean, you, you know, you can't just go and go to a place and, and, you know, get a place into contract and not know your numbers, not do your research. So it's, it's really a matter of getting the right professionals in the area and do your analysis and do your analytics. And, and if you're hiring another company, a vacation rental company to manage your property, um, you know, I would interview three, four or five different companies, have them all run pro formas and, and see what numbers they're going to come up with and see if it's all in line. If they're, if the numbers are completely all over the place, then you, you might not be buying the, the best property for yourself. So you do have to take into consideration all the expenses, you know, your, if you have debt on the property, obviously your principal and interest, but your real estate taxes, any association fees, your electric, your internet, uh, costs for, you know, the cost for cleanings and that kind of stuff is put back onto the guests. But, you know, I always figure in cost for, um, a deep clean at the, at least twice a year. Also, um, you know, linens, we go through linens a lot because we provide like nicer white linens. So people, so it's clean and nice. So, but we have to account for those expenses as well. So it's, you know, people have to do their research to make sure that, you know, they're, they're taking in consideration everything, all, all, all expenses. So, you know, a lot of people are using online search, Zillow, realtor.com, things like that, even before they get to people like us, right? Agents right. or brokers. So, I mean, g- give us an idea. I mean, what, so what happens? Somebody checks out Bonita Beach, and you know they go online, they find a condo that's for sale, and you know then they reach out to the agent or you, for instance. How are you equipped to take them through that process? Do you manage yourself as well, or do you have a referral partner that you kind of work with? That you do you put the proformers together? Can you kind of just take us through that process? Yeah, sure. Um, actually, in our office, I. I don't manage our own properties. I actually outsource it to a company called iTrip. They're a franchisor, but they're independently owned. And I was hunting down a company to kind of align ourselves with just as a real estate brokerage and having them in-house. So we do have quote unquote in-house uh, vacation rental company and they handle all of our pro- personal properties. And then we refer any clients to them directly um, but yeah, they, they handle a lot of the pro formas for us and it's, it's market knowledge. You know, if, if somebody's looking for, you know, you know, say a half million dollar price range and it's a, you know, three bedroom, two bath, you know, Benita might not do the trick, but Fort Myers beach is likely going to do the trick. So it, it's market knowledge and, and figuring out where we can fit people based on their wants, their needs and then line them up with the appropriate professionals to handle the vacation rentals as well as um, handling coming up with the pro formas and the numbers to make sure that the, all the numbers make sense. So I come to you and I say, Hey, look, you know, I mean, a half a million, 300,000, I mean, 700,000. I mean, I have no idea, you know, what to expect on a return on that, or does that get me a vacation for free every year and pay the bills or do I still, come out of pocket. So I call you up and, you know, kind of talking for myself here. I say, Hey, you know, uh, I'm good with a half a million dollars. Um, you take me to Fort Myers and, you know, you find a condo or two bedroom better than three bedroom. I mean, what, what are people looking for? It's kind of all over the place. Even the place I'm in right now, this is a studio condo across the street from the beach. So it's kind of all over the place and it depends on people's price ranges and their family size. If they're utilizing the property themselves, 
you know, they might have children or other family members where they all want to go and utilize it at the same time. So it really just depends on the, the person. So it's just, you know, we have to sit down and ask a series of questions of their wants, their needs, and what do they need for themselves and their family. And you're focusing on what am yeah. I looking for? You know, how many weeks do I want to use it a year? And yep. what, what, what do I need? And then how about financing? I mean, is this like a, even though I'm going to use it for income, is this considered a second home? Uh, it could absolutely be considered a second home for financing, for sure. And if it's for investment purpose, and obviously we're not accountants and speak to an accountant about this, but you, there are favorable tax write-offs by having investment property. So theoretically, your trip from Maryland to Florida could be a complete write-off for yourself as well because you are investing in Florida real estate. So there, there's a lot of advantages there as well. Yeah. So I guess, so how much money do I need down? So is that like the standard, you know, if I, can you do FHA financing on a second home? I mean, are you familiar with that? I always suggest that people don't over leverage, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I would anticipate a lot of people are coming to the table at 20, 25% down. So half a million, is that pretty standard for a, a beach condo in Florida? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would say in Bonita Beach, Fort Myers Beach, a, a half million bucks will, will go a pretty long way in terms of getting you guys a lot of options. Another thing I want to touch on too is you got to watch out, and this is where it comes down to local market, uh, market knowledge as well, is you got to watch out with different associations because they have different um, laws or, or bylaws associated with their association in terms of minimum days, rental days. Um, so for example, this place I'm in right now, it's a, uh, it's three day minimum and that's kind of hard to find. That's why a lot of people are drawn to this place, even though they're studios, but other places like my other place on Bonita beach, um, that's 30 day minimum. And in the off season, it's not going to rent as well because a lot of people don't want to be uh, down in Southwest Florida for a full 30 days during the summer months. So you want to find properties, I would say at least a minimum of 15 days or less. And um, that's where the market knowledge comes into play with different associations, specifically condo associations. So the condo associations actually say you can't do shorter than three or 30 day rentals. Absolutely. Wow. So it really is important to look at those documents. Yeah. In terms of the association documents, you got to make sure that these associations are sound as well. If they're mismanaged, you know, then you could be walking into a property where, you know, five months from now, there's an assessment for a roof and you're, you're having to cut a check for eight grand. So you got to make sure that you're reviewing not just the association documents, rules, regulations, bylaws, but actually the, um, the actual um, uh, financials associated with it and make sure they're financially sound. Are there associations that don't allow that you're familiar with that don't allow rentals at all? The east coast of Florida, so I have a condo over in Fort Lauderdale, and I can't rent that at all. Um, that's coming up for a vote this year to allow rentals, but the east coast of Florida, in my because uh, I signed up with the MLS and everything out there, and I've spent a lot of time out there scouting properties. There, it's much. Uh, there's a lot more communities over on that coast that are a lot more strict when it comes down to uh, short-term rentals. Yeah. So um, what other things do they have to to be careful about? So when they're putting an offer in, I mean, before, I mean, really, if somebody's considering doing this, understanding your budget, you know, in that area, I, mean, I guess you need to know if people even vacation there, right? So you have to know a little bit about the area. So it, do the management companies help you with that? I mean, so if you say you pick Bonita Beach, call you up and say, Hey, you know, show me what you have or send me some, some listings of what you have. Then they would talk to the management company to find out how much they can book that out in a year where they give, you know, they say that pro forma, they give you an idea that, Hey, we think that we could book this beach, you know, two bedroom, two bath condo, 60% of the year. Is that basically what they would tell you? Yeah, essentially we, 
Brett with iTrip, he basically provides the pro form that's broken down monthly and then a percentage that they anticipate renting out per month. So that could be, you know, 30% in the off months and then a hundred percent in or 90%, 95% in the, um, you know, peak season months. So you'll get an idea there. Um, another site that I utilize, especially outside of the areas that I know is air DNA. That's a okay. great site. Cause then you can get an idea of, you know, cause that they pulled the data directly from Airbnb at I think VRBO as well. So they pull the data from those sites so you can see if it's a if it's a hot area for for uh, short term rentals as well. So and what are, what are they going to give you? I mean, do they have is that a is that free data? Does can somebody just download that or do they have to subscribe? It um, if they go to Air DNA, uh, things Air DNA dot com, you can get a certain amount of information for free, and then there's a paid version which provides you way more details than you probably even need. Um, it'll probably even confuse you because I was confused on <laughs> on some of the stuff, some of the data as well. But um, the free version will, will at least kind of give you a, a rough idea of whether you should even take a further look at the area of concentration. So how are the people making out right now in the middle of a pandemic? I mean, are, are people that have invested in these uh, for vacation purposes, you know, or rental purposes, vacation rental purposes. I mean, are they getting crushed right now? Uh, quite the, well, so when the pandemic first started, our properties, unfortunately, people, you know, cut, cut their vacation short because of everything. And we actually got cut some of that revenue. Um, but, you know, a handful of months later, we just, even in our, our off season, we had a lot of people coming down because they were just getting out of, you know, lockdowns and everything. So we, we've been extremely busy. I mean, it's been a busy off season and, and coming into season now, um, you know, January, February, March, April, we're, we're very busy right now. So, um, you know, initially hotels got, got hit. Um, but things are getting booked up and, and vacation rentals. I mean, we're, we're starting to do much better. So, um, you know, black Swan, I think affected everybody in some fashion, but, um, you know, I, I think that everybody's rebounding fairly good in South Florida. I actually know a couple people that, uh, they, they bought these second homes, um, because they said, hey, if we're going to get locked down again, I mean, this was a couple of months ago. They said, if we're going to get locked down again, we're going to be locked down in some place like the beach yep. where we can enjoy it. And uh, I was talking with a friend of mine the other day, and he actually said that he did book three weeks where he doesn't usually do that. They'll take maybe two vacations a year, two week long vacations, and they're going to Florida and they booked a place for three weeks just because they wanted to be in one place, you know, sort of minimize the travel, uh, but they, they still wanted to get away. So you still, you're still seeing where things are booking out. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, even personal example is, you know, I've handful of friends with families that, um, that have been coming down frequently. Normally we'd see them maybe once or twice a year. And we've, I mean, we've seen, them multiple times since the pandemic started because they're saying exactly that. Why would I be locked down up there when I can come down here? Another thing to touch on too is Bonita Beach. We were so fortunate. Um, they closed the parking lots, like the the public parking lots. But if you lived on the beach, which, which I do, um, they didn't close those beaches. So we were good to hang out. We, we never skipped a, a day on the beach on Bonita beach. I can't say the same for Fort Myers beach. I can't say the same for Naples and I can't say the same thing for Fort Lauderdale or obviously Miami. Um, but Bonita beach, they, they were, I mean, they had the, the police going up and down the beaches, making sure that people were, um, kind of ha having their distances, but that this is the only beach that I know that never shut down. Well. Wow. So what are like some of the calls that you're getting? I mean, what areas are you getting <clears throat> a lot of people investing from the, the Northeast? Northeast, uh, you know, what's crazy is our, 
the coast here because how 75 and 95 run so 95 is bringing you from the northeast right down to the east coast of florida it's a straight shot and then 75 goes right up into the midwest so traditionally we have a lot of midwesterns you know ohio and um, they're, they're primarily, they've been coming here for years and years, but now we're starting to see the Northeast come to this coast as well, because it, it's more laxed on this coast. You know, the East coast of Florida is more like the Northeast. It's fast paced and kind of like, you know, growing up in Jersey, it's, it's yeah. a faster, faster pace of life. This coast, um, it's, it's just more relaxed. Uh, we're, we are seeing more than Northeasterners coming over here besides just the Midwest. So these management companies, you know, you buy a place and, you know, the, it appears that the numbers will work. I mean, what do they charge? I, I, I know um, like here, if you're going to hire a management company to take care of your long-term rentals, it's about 8%, 8 to 10% of your rents. What does for vacation rentals is probably a lot more involved, right? I mean, they have a lot more work to do. What's the percent average or what should someone be looking for to spend? Um, it's it's kind of all over the board based on where the properties are. Um, and we, you know, before aligning ourselves with iTrip, we were going to start a basically a vacation rental department. And I just knew that, you know, especially going, you know, doing more stuff online and YouTube and educational stuff. I just knew that it would just get, it was going to consume me and probably wasn't worth it. And I initially, I started doing um, my own property short term and I, I messed up things. I really did. I was not, you know, it, it, you have to focus on it. And I messed up in terms of bookings, check-ins, checkouts, cleanings. I messed up in terms of uh, filing the appropriate taxes with the appropriate entities in Florida with the bed tax and, and sales tax. So anyway, um, that's why we outsourced it because I just didn't want to deal with it. But, you know, out here on average in Southwest Florida, it ranges anywhere from, I'd say, 15 to 25 percent. Um, my brother's up in the Panhandle. He's got a vacation rental property up there. I think he pays like 22 percent. Um, Big Canoe in Georgia, when we were scouting properties up there, they were close to 50 percent. So wow. that's why I, I was ready to pull a trigger on a, a, a cool little cabin up there, but the numbers just didn't work because of all the management companies in the area charged literally 50%. Um, so, you know, those numbers didn't work. And um, so I, I think it just depends, but yeah, it's going to be a lot more, it's a lot more work than your traditional annual tenant. So that's why, you know, rightfully so they, they deserve a higher fee. So what do, I mean, are they purely the ones that are booking it out? I mean, they, do they take that role 100%? The vacation rental companies? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's their, their sole focus. Like I trip with us. I think they have, I think they're approaching a hundred doors. So, you know, they, they, it's all family and they have their team and everything. So they don't have time to, and Brett, he's a real estate broker as well. And he refers us um, sales clients because he doesn't have the time for it. So yeah, that's the sole focus. And it's, you know, it, it goes with anything, you know, if, if, um, if it's not a, a sole focus of somebody's, you know, then, then it's going to be kind of half-assed and what kind of company do you want to hire that's doing a half-assed job, you know? So it, it's just, uh, it has to be their sole focus, which is a good question. If you are hiring a company is, yeah, <laughs> is that your sole focus? And you don't want to negotiate with them if that's the case too much, because what happens is, you know, if you're on the lower side of it and they're getting 20, 20 percent from most of their clients and you're coming in at 15 percent, who are they going to book first? I mean, you know, it's yeah. dollars and cents. Right. So if they're incentivized, I mean, if they're booking your places out and they're hitting your your goals, I mean, they're entitled to the money. That's a great point for sure. Yeah. So what, I mean, what else do they do other than booking your uh, condo? I mean, do they, do they clean or what else is included in, let's say that 20% commission? Is that purely sales? Um, no, I mean, they, they handle the check-in checkouts. They handle the cleaners going in. Uh, if there's any maintenance issues, a leak, 
whatever. They have their handymen go in and make sure that everything's fixed. Um, the guests are charged the cleaning fee. They're also charged the taxes. So state of Florida comes out to 11%. There's a bed tax and then sales tax, two different entities. So they're responsible for taking that tax money and actually paying the appropriate entity, which is something I messed up on and I got fined and everything else because I didn't, I paid the wrong amounts. So there, there is a lot that goes into it. And, you know, I don't, I don't receive any phone calls, you know, if something comes up, they just take care of it. So, um, you know, every month they just, they drop, drop the revenue in our bank account, direct deposit, and you don't have to mess with it. So, um, and with iTrip, it's cool because they have a owner's portal. So, um, you can go in and block out whatever dates you want for your friends and family. And it's no additional charge, which one thing that I got to suggest to anybody's watching or listening to this is, Make sure because there's companies out there that'll charge you for your personal bookings, and I highly disagree with that. I mean, I get it; they're in the business; they they want to make money and everything else. But you know, that's your property, so I would not go with a firm that that does something like that unless it's a minimal charge of you know whatever it is. But um, so they they charge you on the uh, on the revenue that they're not getting because you're staying there for two weeks. Yeah, so whatever percentage that would be of that block of time, whatever that rate is, they'll want that 20% of that amount. Yep. Time. Oh, wow. Yeah. There's some companies that do that. A lot of them don't, but they're, you know, you got to read the fine print and make sure that you are thoroughly reviewing these contracts with any vacation rental company, because, you know, you could be bound to a lot of different things that you weren't anticipating, regardless of the conversation that took place. But, you know, it is Todd with, you know, being a real estate broker, you got to got to review contracts. <laughs> Absolutely. Unfortunately, enough people, a lot of people don't. I mean, I just had a situation where, you know, one of our uh, tenants that we placed in a, uh, in a rental, you know, representing the landlord, uh, you know, they wanted, we asked them, we said, look, do you want a month to month when the, after your year, do you want to go month to month or you want to go year to year? And he said, we want to go year to year. Well, guess what? Um, you have to let the landlord know 90 days prior to the end of your term or it automatically renews for another year. So we got a call a couple of days ago saying, hey, you know, like we went out of the lease by, you know, when we, it, which is in like a week. And, you know, we said, I mean, you can talk to the landlord, but I mean, we went over this. A lot of people, it just, they, they don't, they don't read that fine print, which yeah. gets back to your point. It's a great idea to ask for referrals. And, you know, make sure that management company that you're dealing with, that you're asking them, you know, like, what's, what do I need to be looking out for here? I mean, where's the, where's the fine print? And, you know, but if you're dealing with those reputable uh, companies, hopefully they're going to bring that to the, you know, to the forefront. And real quick to touch on that, like prime example, my brother that bought a place up in the panhandle, um, he had me review the contract for the, the vacation rental company up there. And they literally had an $800 fee associated with changing the locks. And he already had the, the smart lock on the, on the, the door already, Wi-Fi enabled and everything else. And realistically, that lock was like a $250 lock, maybe $100 to install, install. So it's a $350 if you didn't have it. And they're charging $800. So I, I marked up his contract pretty significantly. And I was like, don't budge on any of this. And, uh, and sure enough, you know, they agreed to it, but that's the kind of stuff you have to watch out for. How about Airbnb? I mean, so where does that fit into the mix? So if you have a management company that is responsible for managing your condo, and then all of a sudden you decide you want to put it on Airbnb, how does that work? They already put it on Airbnb. Okay. So they're doing they part of their services doing that. Yeah, they and they handle because you know they handle the expenses associated with being on Airbnb and all the other all the other sites out there. So, um, so they charge less commission if it comes through Airbnb, or is that what they're using as the primary source of booking? I tr well, it depends on what company you're utilizing. I trip they syndicate to a lot of different sites. Um, I, some are even hotel sites, so. Um, but it, it's it's all the same same charge. Okay, so it's if it, if they're charging you twenty percent, it doesn't doesn't matter where the source is coming from. 
Correct. It's the same. Gotcha. So let's talk about some of the things, you know, I've heard you say um, there's a lot of pros, but there's also some, and I, I don't want to say cons, pros and cons, but there are certainly things that other considerations you have to be careful about. And in Florida, it, hurricanes is probably one of them, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. We've, we had a very active hurricane season this, this year or past year. Um, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's something we got to deal with, but you know, even in this place that I'm in right now, we, we recently replaced the sliders as well as, um, I think one of them was already impact and we replaced, I think the kitchen window here. So this is just a small place, but, um, everything is impact here. So we don't have to worry about anything besides bringing furniture inside when we know hurricanes coming. Um, but then you know if you're if you're a, if you have a house on a monolithic slab and you're near the water, I mean you got to worry about flooding and everything else. But I mean that's that's the I think every area has got their you know natural disaster. You know, so it's just something we we live through. I mean, I'd rather have a know about a hurricane five days in advance than a tornado that just pops up. <laughs> that's true. And yeah. I guess, you know, it can go the other way. I mean, a bad storm, if you're at a, in a ski town, you know, that vacation rental might be great. But then again, if you go through a winter where it's 50 degrees and they're not making snow, I mean, that's going to crush you too, right? So um, it's important to know your seasons. If you're looking for a vacation rental, kind of understand, you know, the seasonality of the, um, you know, where you're looking and what those possibilities are, because, you know, you may experience those years where that cycle just doesn't, it's not your friend and, and uh, you don't have any uh, income coming in. So, you know, you probably need a little bit in reserve where if you have more of a, you know, a long-term annual rental, you know, chances are, I mean, you may get a tenant that goes in and costs you money or doesn't pay and it takes months to get them out. Um, but on something like this, you certainly have your, you uh, some disadvantages even with the active uh hurricane season that we had i don't i don't recall anybody i don't recall anybody dropping out of bookings because of it and we were pretty light here i mean we had uh some that that came through but nothing significant that hit us so we, we were okay i mean if 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 we know that a direct hit's going to come then absolutely people are going to uh, they're going to drop off and you, you hit the nail on the head. You said have reserves. And that's, that's another thing that you have to take in consideration when you're running your, your expenses associated the, with the property is a reserve account for the rainy day or the, the hurricane day. So um, you're, you're spot on on that. So what about wear and tear? I mean, what happens? I mean, people are away, they're partying, they're having a grand old time. They're bringing sand in a lot of times. I mean, what, you know, what does that do to your wear and tear costs? And, um, you know, what are some of the, do you have any stories that you could tell of rental nightmares and vacation rentals? I mean, we've had other clients that had bigger houses um, that just party house and just kind of got destroyed in terms of just more, more mess cleanup than anything. And then additional charges would go back to the guests on something like that. But I mean, there's, there have, in my experience, I haven't had anything too crazy. Um, you know, there is normal wear and tear that you have to anticipate, um, certain, certain furniture we replace over the time, over, over the years. Um, so things break and it, it's going to happen and you got to obviously account for that kind of stuff as well. Just like I said, with refreshing linens and, you know, we do cleanings on the, uh, the couches. We have a company come in and clean the couches every so often, that kind of stuff. But I have not, you know, knock on wood, haven't had anything too crazy happen with, with any of our vacation rental properties or any clients that we know of that have any, any, anything too significant. So what about like, uh, their fair housing laws? You know, when you're when you're renting, you know, more long term rentals and, you know, you can't you know, deny people for certain things. I mean, does the same apply in short term rentals? Can you say families only or they're like um, the same kind of 
fair housing laws that apply? Um, you know, I, I would recommend anybody, you know, speaking to an attorney regarding any kind of fa fair housing, but not really. I mean, it, it really comes down to um, sleeping arrangements. How, how, how many heads can sleep in a specific place? Like this is a studio, but it'll sleep four. You know, if you have a fifth person, that's just against the even the rules here at the complex, the association. Um, and I think that there's a age limit in terms of like how old you need to be to book. I think that's even for like hotels. You know, uh, there's a certain age that if you're going to book it yourself as an adult, you have to be a certain age. I forget what that age is. I don't know if that's 20 or 30. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I, wait a minute, I, you're what? You're 21 years old and you're coming down for a, a <laughs> party and you're going to stay, you're going to stay in my condo, huh? I mean, you know, that's kind of what I'm getting at. I mean, can you like, you know, what do you do in that case? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think it might be even 23 maybe. And you have to have, I think you have to have a credit card to put for incidentals. So there, there are certain things like that. If, well, let me, let me touch on this too. If there's an association that like um, my primary residence that I lease out for three months of the year, they have a application fee there or an application for the association as well. So any guests actually have to go through that application process and they pull background. I don't think that they pull credit. They might pull credit too. I'm not even sure. Um, but they have their whole process as well to approve that tenant. Um, but that place is a 30 day minimum. That's so. what I was going to ask. Yeah. That, that yeah. 30 day. I mean, maybe you get a lot of snowbirds that are coming down, you know, they want to be there for three months or whatever, and just kind of have a place to, you know, to get away from the cold. Um, so you, the important things that I hear you say, you know, um, on a lot of your videos is that, you know, reviews, I mean, we know that everything's review based and, if you're going to landlord these, um, you know, these, these short-term vacation rentals, um, it's very important. So how are you fostering besides, you know, um, you know, having a nice place? I mean, are there, are there certain niceties that you tell people, you know, Hey, look, you know, you want to have, like you just said, wine or, and I know in one of your videos, you spoke about, um, you know, bikes, you provide two adult bikes and maybe even sometimes two children bikes because, bikes are expensive. So it's kind of like that added bonus to say, Hey, you know, we have, we have great bikes that you guys can cruise up and down the boardwalk or whatever. I mean, what other things um, should somebody be considering to get those big, you know, high five-star reviews? Depending on where you're buying a property, you know, make sure that you experience it. And then when you're there, what do people do in those areas? And if it's bicycling, if it's kayaking and you can store kayaks on the property, whatever it is, those little additional things do make a big difference. And like you said, the wine and waters and, you know, you think about it, if, you, if you've ever traveled, sometimes you fly in, you get in late, it's midnight and you come into a hotel or whatever. It's nice to have some snacks to snack on. But um, I think, and I travel a good amount, something that's important for me is a comfortable bed, clean sheets, and a clean place. Even if the furniture is outdated or the place is outdated, as long as it's very, very clean and a comfortable bed and clean sheets, then then I'm, I'm happy, you know? So I think cleanliness is huge. Um, I did one video talking about um, a place that we rented in um, Key West. It was a, a townhome. And, you know, we, we had a, a lot of the family out and it was actually Thanksgiving a couple of years back. And I opened up the cabinets in the kitchen and there was like a ton of Tupperware. There's a ton of cups from Duval Street. I mean, it was just filled and, you know, you reach in the cabinet and stuff's all falling out on top of you. And you're going to have that kind of stuff happen to people. You know, they fly in and they can't take stuff back with them. So they're going to leave stuff for the next person. So you got to train your cleaning crew correctly, make sure that they are discarding stuff that doesn't necessarily belong there. Um, so I, I think just little things like that too make a big difference. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. So I think I've even done that myself in a hotel. You know, it's like, wait a minute, I came with this, but I can't fit it now. And you're kind of 
deciding what you're going to leave behind. I was thinking one time, you know, I bet these cleaning people really get some really nice stuff, you know? Um, and would you stick it at the front desk and say, clearly they didn't need that. I don't, I don't know. Um, maybe leave a little note behind that says, Hey, you can have this if you're not planning on taking it, uh, taking it with you. You know, we're, we're close with our cleaners out here. We, we know them very well. And they, um, they get a ton of stuff, you know, from cases of beer to cases of water to frozen food to, you know, just a lot of, you know, unopened stuff that people leave. Um, so they, they do, they, they get a, a lot of things and you'll find people, you know, they'll leave things behind. Like somebody left in this place, a boogie board and a whole snorkel deal and they left it behind. So we actually kept it for this place and we're like, okay, it, it actually works here and it gives you ideas. Okay. That's what people want for certain places too. Yeah. So kind of start to finish some, somebody um, wanting to get a vacation rental to the, to the point to where it's actually making money. Is it possible to profit that first year? Yeah. I mean, depending on your expenses, you could be profitable day one. I know um, <clears throat> prime example, this place we bought in December, a handful of years back, and it was it was rough and season. You can't do any renovations in this complex, any heavy renovations. So we kind of just did a, a, a partial that wasn't very loud in terms of construction. And um <clears throat> I think it was end of, end of like mid December we closed on it, and then uh, by the end of December we were ready for photos. We threw it out there, <coughs> and we had bookings right away in January. So, and we that first season we were filled almost immediately. Yeah, and you just said something that's really important. I'm glad you mentioned it. Photos. So, do you recommend? I mean, you know, I mean, most of the people that are booking uh, vacation rentals. Um, I mean, they don't go and check it out. It's not like you're going to live there. You know, you go and you look at the different apartments. I mean, they're basically seeing it online. So any uh, tips for people investing that makes that place stand out? Yeah. I mean, you know, as a real estate broker, and I'm sure you guys hire professional photographers, you have to. I mean, it. we're, we're in the world of everybody shops online. And yes, I would say 99.9. .9, I don't think we've ever shown any of our rental properties before somebody checked in. Like it, that just doesn't happen. They're coming from different States. Um, so yes, they're, they're relying on photos. They're relying on reviews. They're relying on videos as well. And I would have, have it all professionally done. Um, you know, spend a couple hundred bucks and get incredible photos because that is how they're making a decision on whether they're booking yours or, or somebody else's. Are you guys using the Matterport 3D tours? Uh, I know that Brett uses them on some properties that are larger in size, just to get yeah. an idea of the floor plans. And then other ones, we just we just have simple walkthrough, you know, video walkthroughs on them. Wow, that's great. So um, I wanted to ask you about you give gift cards, or some people give gift cards for reviews. How does that work? Uh, basically, you know, they, they provide a review, um, <clears throat> provide them a gift card and then just encourage them to refer other people to you for, you know, their friends and family to book the same place. And, uh, as time progressed, like prime example, the people that are in my place right now, they booked one of the couples, um, they booked two months, January, February, and they booked last year. But as soon as they checked out last year, they booked it again for the next year. So a year in advance, they already booked it. Um, so you, what happens is you, you tend to have repeat, um, guests. And then a lot of times if they're treated well, you'll get their friends and family that book as well, because they had just had a great experience in your property, in your location. So, it's just an added in incentive. Um, so little, again, it's little things like that, that take a little bit of time, but it, it could, it could pay big dividends in the future. So do you put a little sign inside on the refrigerator or something that says, you know, Hey, you get a $15, you know, Starbucks gift card. If you leave us a five, you know, review online. I mean, or is that, or do you send them an email later and how are you uh, encouraging it? Yeah. I mean, we have, 
like this is just on the the bikes here at this place <clears throat> and then you got a resident guide and then we actually have a complete book over there and then there's another book where people actually write their hand write their experiences and what they've done and everything else so yeah everything that we want to promote including us as real estate brokers you know if you're having a fantastic time here and you interested in buying in Southwest Florida and buying a place like this. So we, we promote everything internally here for sure. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Well, we really appreciate your, uh, your advice here tonight. Oh, no problem. So you're looking for clients, right? So, I mean, they can reach out to you and if you're interested in investing in Florida, they should check you out. Yeah. Um, you can check us out on YouTube. Uh, just type my name in Steve Daria, D-A-R-I-A. we got a lot of uh, content on real estate, personal finance and business. Yeah. My, my team, we're, we're always looking to help out other people that are interested in investing in real estate. Um, you can go to our website, sunversesnow.com and uh, check us out there. And we'd be more than happy to help out anybody that has interest in buying in, in South Florida. That's awesome. And we'll make sure everybody gets your links in the uh, show notes, wherever they're watching or listening to this podcast. And uh, we really appreciate your time tonight. And guys, feel free to reach out to Steve and or myself. Thanks for watching. Thanks a lot, Todd. Sax Realty, Maryland broker number 607720, office number 443-318-4514, equal housing opportunity.